What's up guys, welcome back to the channel guys, the boy Ryan LFC back again guys, another top shelf video for you guys today. I want you guys to go and check out Cards Plug, use the coupon code Ryan LFC to get 10% off your order, everything will be done in the description. It's a perfect FIFA card for your loved one or for yourself. You can get your own picture on it, you can rate your own self, you can get a club logo and also you can get your country logo on it. It's a perfect gift card for someone who loves football or your girlfriend or your boyfriend enjoy the video what's up guys welcome back to the channel guys your boy ryan lfc back again guys i need a top shelf video for you guys today i have a special guest from the jamaican national team this player is a great player and his name is meggy how are you doing my brother welcome to the channel i'm um, good man thank you very much man i really appreciate you asking me to join the show as well yeah, 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 yeah. So, how is the family and everyone doing? Um, the family is my family is doing good at, as far as I know. Yeah. You know? Okay, good. But let us start the show. My first question to you: We do things kind of a little bit different. Like, um, so, I drop my question. So, tell us about your childhood growing up. Um. I had, I had a really fun childhood, you know, um, I grew up in a community called, I don't know if you know, Backbush. Yeah. That's where I grew up, on Mountain View, yeah, and I grew up with a lot of friends. Um, I was always free, I could go out, um, have fun with my friends, play football, do everything that I like. I, really, I didn't have a, um, but like, lifestyle-wise, my childhood was really difficult because, it, um, as you know, where where I live is like where you call it the ghetto. Um, so it wasn't easy growing up where money and food and those stuff is concerned. But you know, um, that it didn't really phase me because um, sometimes you know you just want to be around your friends. You forget that you're even up. You're, you even want something to eat. You know, you're just living and you're happy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all in all, I had a really like difficult childhood where that was concerned. Like my family is not a rich family or anything, but. Yeah, other than that, it was really fun and yeah, it was good. So how much how much um brother and sister you have? Um I have I have two brothers, you know, I don't have any sisters. Okay, great. Father and mother still alive? Yeah, they're still alive. Okay, great. My next question to you, um how do you how do you know you have a talent to play football? At what age you start to play football? Um, I don't remember the exact age, you know, but um, as long as I can remember, it's, I, I think I started at a really, really young age. Um, I started playing in the primary leagues at um, grade two. So I was, and I was playing football way before that. I was always playing football. Um, I'm basically from a football family, you know, so I grew up knowing about football. It was all football. So what school you attend from the basic come right up? Um, I went to Grace Temple Basic School, and then I went to um, Clan Carthy Primary. Then I um, went to Dunwoon Technical, and then I transferred from Dunwoon in grade grade eight year, and then I went to Jamaica College after. That. Okay, when you went to Jamaica College, talk about what is a different um, different high school. You know, Dunwoon is a very good technical high school, but you move up to the upper class. So you a lot of upper class kids going to JC. Talk us when you go to JC. Talk us through that moment. Um, when I was leaving, then you know, because you know, when you start high school, it's just you, you make a lot of new friends. Um, so when I when I was leaving, like my friends at the school, I was it was really like I was kind of sad, but um, yeah. Um, when I went to JC, you know, I didn't really I knew I knew a couple couple of guys that played football I didn't know a lot of people and they weren't in my classes you know so I wasn't speaking to anybody or anything you know but then after I started like training I started making um, a lot of new friends yeah and then after that everything just turned out how it, how it should turn out well definitely I want you to do you play um course for JC yeah I played I played one year okay so what was that experience playing course uh, it was it was good in um 
because it was good and it was difficult at first for me because um when I was at Dunwoon, I used to like I'm the I'm I used to be in like everything was surround everything was surrounding me at Dunwoon, you know. Everybody wants to give me the ball and this, but at JC it had a lot of players. So I, I think it, it helped me to like to become more of a team player, whereas you know when I was at Dunwoon, I would just take the ball, run, run past everybody and shoot, you know, and score. But JC, I started um, playing, playing, like everybody touching the ball. And yeah, it was good. It was really, really good. We went to the semifinals, I think. And um, something happened with my with my hand. I don't know. The mark is not there anymore, but I got a, like something slitted my, my arm here. And I had to um, come off the field and we lost. We lost the game. Yeah, and then after that, the year after, I, went, I started playing Manning Cup for JC. So, what is it like to play in Manning Cup for JC? I know you becomes champion um, three years straight for Jamaica College. Your first um, Manning Cup win, how that feel? And how many games you play in that first season? Um, the fir first of all, the feeling is uh, it's different, you know, because, um, you know, it, like growing up, you're watching all the, the players playing Manning Cup and like the year before I saw Flemings and, and Rafik and all those players playing, you know. But at the start of the my first season playing Manning Cup for JC, it was really difficult. I wasn't playing. I think I played about two games in the first round. And my next game, my my the, like my real game was was one one the game I had to play in the Super Cup. That was my first, no, that was my second start. And um, it was because one of my teammates he wears gla he wore he wears um, glasses, but he didn't get he didn't have his contact lens to play the game. It was a night game, and I was the only person like the only attacking midfield on the bench. And the coach like was speaking to me before the game and telling me that um, just relax and play my game and whatever. And I scored, I scored, I scored in that game. We won one nil, and after that. I played every single game, all the games after that. I've never sat on the bench after that game. Well, I think um, your first season was a very good season, but it's just you just transformed to be a different player when you come on to the second season, your third season. Two years ago, Terry Meggies was one of the biggest players in Jamaica at the age of 17, 18. Oh, you live up to that eye to continue now to being a great player. But before I, I get to that, I want to stick a little bit about your journey in Jamaica College. Do you guys get a lot of support? Because I went to Excelsior and we do have a lot of past students give back. But Jamaica College, it seems a little bit different. You guys get logs. You guys get every single thing you guys need. And you, you guys always been performing. Is that true? Um, yeah, it's it's true. You know, um, there's a lot of people. It, like if I think if you, if as a footballer, like if you genuinely love football and you work hard, and if you go to JC and and you like you fail, I think it's it's because you want to fail because um there's everything there. Like there is the old boys. Every everybody is there just to help you. You know, um, they're willing to do to do everything to help you to make you feel like good, comfortable. You know, so. Um, yeah, um, and, a, and, and a big shout out to them also. Thank them for that. Um, yeah, well, JC, it's, it's, it's where football is concerned, it's, it's a next level. It's, it's close to professional. Um, so it was it was already preparing you, like, to start playing with, with like, start playing men football, you know? Yeah, and as I said before, I appreciated um, that from them. Yeah, and it was, it's, it's really, really good at um, JC. Definitely. And you want three Manning Cup. That's a great achievement. A lot of players want to play in the Manning Cup. A lot of players want to win the Manning Cup. I play in the Manning Cup for three seasons. I always get knocked out by Jamaica College. I don't know. For some reason, Junior Flemings, Rafiki, they always come up big against Excelsior when they need to. I think you guys have been lucky over the years when you guys come up <laughs> against Excelsior. But... Kudos to you guys, but I want to talk to you about the new Champions League in your time. I don't know if they still have it in Jamaica, but in your time, always feel to play the Champions League, the big boy uh, leagues. It was 
No, that was it was different and I and I really, really enjoyed it. You know, I, I thought it was really it was a really, really good thing to do. Um like to get to play against the the, the school the schools from the rural areas also, you know. Um it was it was a really, really good experience. Um and I think it's a really it's a, a good platform to like for players who want to go to the next level also because that attracted a lot of eyes, you know, when it when the first time it came out, a lot of people were watching and yeah, I think it was really, really good. It was a really, really good thing that they, they did that. I always want to talk to you about this incident a couple of years ago. I think it's the last season when you guys get knocked out by I think it's JC in the um soup in the um Champions League at Sobaina Park. I just want to talk to you a little bit because I think it's 2018. That's if, um, the Champions League. Which year is that? Um, 20, it was 2017. It's 2017. I think that's my early part coming to Canada. And I was watching that game. And two years ago, three years ago, you were the man. You were the best player in schoolboy football, both in rural era and in Kingston. You were the talk of the town. I, I hear a lot of people comparing it to Black Pearl. I hear people talking about um, Pele, former Charlie Smith player. You were amongst a lot of big superstars. I think Marsh will play for um, Calabar. I think a next player will play for St. George's College. You guys was the talk of the town. And I want to ask you about that goal. I know it was an indirect goal and it haven't caught. It ruled out. But when Wayne Walker was being a commentator and he said, Tariq Meggy, him last kick of the moment to save Jamaica College. And the referee put up him and that was an indirect and you haven't paying attention because you were more focused, locked in on the game to um to try to get the equalize for your team to push it in extra time. Talk us through that moment when you take off a shirt to score that goal and then you realize it haven't come. Talk us through that moment. How do you feel? Um first of all, you know I'm like when when the when when you got the foul, yeah, um, I wasn't like I was I blocked out everything completely. Uh, I spot I spotted the ball and like I was just like looking where I was going to put the ball. Um, but I didn't the referee, Um, if you watch the video, like it was not in my line of view. So I, I, like even if I wanted to see him, it was it was it was slightly behind me, you know. So I wasn't seeing him. Properly, but if I if I'd if I'd seen that he had his hand up, then I would have I would have known that it was an indirect free kick. But I didn't I didn't get like how how it was an indirect free kick because it was a it was a foul. So I didn't under, I didn't understand like how was it an indirect free kick? You know because the KC player fouled a Jamaica College player. So yeah. I didn't like I didn't under I didn't understand what happened for the for it to be an indirect free kick. That's what I, that that's what my problem was. I wanted to know what. How it became an indirect free kick after after I realized everything and I heard everything that it's an indirect free kick because it I think it, it kicked the player in his face yeah yeah and I just didn't get how it was an indirect free kick but yeah when I when I scored like when I scored you know it was it was it was like it was everything the feeling was everything it was a feeling of relief because it's the last it was the last kick of the game as they saw and um, I ran I was running I ran over to my friends. Um, I took my shirt off, and then like to hear that it didn't count, it was just I don't know. It was I don't know how to describe that the feeling that I had in that moment. Yeah, but um, it's it's also a good experience, you know. I'm um, like it, it keeps it um it, it helps you to be more aware. Like if I was more aware, probably I would have seen the referee and know that um it was a direct free kick, and then I would. Like have somebody touch the ball and then I shoot. Yeah, but, but looking back, it's it's like it's good memories, you know. Um, it's really nice to, to like even sometimes I see people posting it or reposting it again. Um, it's it's nice to like to see and like sometimes you, you remember and you just have to look at it and smile, you know. Yeah, I think that goal was a great goal. And before before um. The, the, you guys get the the car um the foul. I hear the commentator Wayne Walker will say it was an indirect indirect. He has to touch it. That was when I see the referee put up him and I was saying someone has to touch the ball before you shoot it. 
And kudos to KC. I think they having they, they they did what have, they they was having a great game, but you guys was just lacking something, especially in the final third. I think um KC defend you guys very well. They did not give you guys a lot of space to play. And with you inside the midfield, trust me, I admire how you play, man. You are an excellent player. Every single time I see you on the ball, you remind me of Mezil Ozil. You right, you remind me of Jeremy and you. You remind me of um the guy that played for Everton, farmer, Colombian player. I think he played for Everton now. Oh, Rodriguez, Almez, Almez Rodriguez. Every single time I see him play, Lionel Messi, you have a very good left foot, just like Jeremy and you. And if you continue with this part, I think you're going to get big. I think you can be Jamaica, one of Jamaica's biggest midfielder because you have that creativity, you have that style. You have that work with, and I love every single thing I watch in schoolboy football. But that transaction from schoolboy football to Premier League, I know you represent Aberview in that Premier League. You know, many schoolboy football fail to live up their expectation to bring it over in the Premier League. They're playing against man. It's difficult. Shaman Nichols did it at Boystown, tear up the, um, the Premier League, young player. A lot of individual award at the time at Boystone, stop goal scorer for Boystone. He was the one who keeping Boystone in the Premier League after, after. As soon as they lose him, they went down. How was that transaction? Tell me about the Premier League and tell me about Overview Football Club. Um, you know, when I when I when I when it was um like my time to, to go on to the Premier League, the, the funny thing is, you know, I was I was playing Premier League in, in 2015. I was playing Premier League like my first season of Manning Cup. I was playing, and my father stopped me because I was, um, I was, I was, I'm um, coming home late in the night because I was, um, in that time they were training in the night. Um, I played one game, and after that game I stopped. Um, yeah, and because of school, um, because I was, I couldn't wake up for school and and all those stuff, so I had to stop. Um, yeah, and then like after when I went back now. After well, after I finished playing Manning Cup, um, I was fortunate. I was fortunate enough to have a lot of like um, prof ex professional players around me, you know, so that that helped me a lot. Um, and they saw they saw that I had talent and they believed in my talent and like they helped me in, in every. I think they, they thought, I, I think they helped me in every single way that they could have helped me. Um, like. Not only to prepare me for the Premier League, but like to prepare me for for the next level of football, you know. And I want to say a big thank you to everybody that um, was a part of that, like like that little um, time I had in Harborview. Um, yeah, but in Harborview, like you're really fortunate. Like it's always like players that know a lot about professional football know what you need to do and like how to um, help you to improve your game. So. Um, I think as long as you are like you're willing to learn, then the sky is the limit. What do you what what do you talk on Bibi Gun? What type of impact he have on you? Um I I don't know how to explain like when I was at Arborview, you know, coach when I was at Arborview, like Coach Bibi was basically everything, um, every single thing like where my success is concerned, you know, um, like even sometimes, like I had, I had a problem. Like I, I always thought that I, I was right, you know, like because I was good on the ball and everything. I always like even though I would do something, I I do it. I don't lose the ball or anything, you know. But like he was always showing me a next way to do it quicker, you know, because you know at, at a professional level, it, that's the difference. The, the speed of play. Is, is totally different. So it was always streaming that. But I would say, like, I always, has, I always had a, another thing to say, you know, but, like, I would go home and think about it. Yeah, and I was, like, I was looking back at it and I'm saying, like, he played at the highest level and, like, it was basically every single thing, like, that prepared me for that next step, you know? Like, he always tried to, I don't know, it, I think sometimes I even think he, he believed in me more than how I believed in myself. Like sometimes I would do just like some random stupid things when I was playing for Harborview and like even the 
sometimes I'm here, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm looking back at it, you know, I'm saying like, if it was another person, you know, like, they would have, they would have been finished with me or, but I don't know, it just, you always had a lot of time for me, like, regardless of what I was doing, you know, and he's, he's, I, I was, yeah, yeah and I was, uh, like, sometimes I'm here and I'm looking back at it and I'm saying like, like, he was treating me like he was my father, you know, like, yeah. he would explain everything, to, every single thing to me, and I would still go back, go back and do the same thing that. He was telling me it's not right, you know, and he was he would still be there for me like whenever I need him or like whenever I run run into trouble or anything, like where football is concerned, he would like just still has a lot of time for me and um, I don't know, I don't think I can thank him enough for that. Um I don't speak with him a lot um this these days, but I know like if I like link him or anything, he would he will still be there for me. Like that's the type of person he is, you know. Um his, his personality is just different. I've never met another another person like him. Yeah, I think Baby Gardner is a <coughs> excuse me. Baby is a very good player and in see the talent in you and at fem age back in um at your age, he been in that situation. So he won the best for you. He play against Manu, Cristiano Ronaldo, he play against Steve Gerard. He play a lot of great play against a lot of great player in the world. So he want the best for you. I think a little bit sometime, you know, doing my research, people say he probably put a lot of pressure upon you and a lot of expectation because he know good you are. So that's why I'm continuing pushing you, push, pressing the button and stuff. But Bibi is a very good player and great coach, and I wish him all the best. But my next question to you, two years ago, you guys have a chance to qualify for the World Cup. Talk me through that tournament you were the standout player in that world cup qualifier in florida scoring some brilliant goal assists you do every single thing right what do you think where jamaica don't fall not making that world cup and you guys have a excellent team um the downfall is it's it's really clear um the only way we would have made it through the group, we had to we had to win the Mexico game, and we didn't. We, we drew the game, and then it was all down to goal difference, and it scored a lot of. Uh, I don't know what happened. Like, it was really strange, but um, they scored a lot. They scored a lot. More, they scored more goals than us in the in the tournament after we played against them. We drew um two two, and then. Yeah, that, that was the only problem. If we if we had won that game, then we would have we would have we would have um played in the World Cup. But yeah, the, the tournament itself was really really good. I think um, a lot of people didn't expect us to do as well as we did. Um, yeah, and yeah, it was it was it was it was really a special tournament, you know, in in every single way. Like even the 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 format of the tournament was really crazy. I didn't understand it. Normally, you have um two teams going through. Uh, but that year they just they decided that it's only one. I don't know for for whatever reason, but that's the pass. Um, but yeah, the, all the guys I think performed really well in that tournament. Um, yeah, the team was 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 different. I don't know what happened, but we played we played some some brilliant football in that tournament. Yeah, how much would you grade yourself from one to ten in that two years ago in that World Cup qualifier? <laughs> um. I don't know, you know, like I, I, I think I would leave that to like, like you guys are the coaches are, you know. I just, I just wanted to be out there, I'm um, enjoying myself with my, because all the guys on the team is my friends, you know. It's like playing with their friends. I just wanted to enjoy myself, representing my country, you know, making a lot of people proud. Um, I don't really, I, I can't really grade myself. Um, I think, yeah, I just, I just leave that to like the spectators are. Uh, the coaches or whoever was watching the games, yeah. Yeah, I think you have a great tournament. I would give you a um a seven out of ten. I think you could do more, especially in that first game. But I think the rest of the team, I think individually, you guys have a have a great tournament, but unfortunate, you know, the last game they should play both teams, the Mexico game and the Jamaican game at the set time. I think that's a disadvantage to Mexico. But you know, it what it is. But that was your guys' great chance to make it to the FIFA Club World Cup, and 
it was a big disappointment to the nation. But you guys doing excellent. A lot of people, a lot of jur um, journalists in Jamaica didn't expect you guys to do well. And you guys haven't lost a match in that. It's ridiculous. This is the first time I see a World Cup qualifier. You guys haven't lost. You guys go well over 20 at goal and seven, seven points, two win, one jaw, and you guys didn't make it to the World Cup. That kind of strange to me. Yeah, I didn't understand the format at all, as I said before. You but think you you think um the the federation do enough to help you guys like preparation, play more practice game, um the food wise and all of this stuff. You guys was um comfortable in that tournament. How many training sessions you guys have leading up to that World Cup qualify? Um, before before um before that tournament. I think we only we, we trained only once together as a group before we played our first game in that tournament. Um, yeah, but I think nobody really cared about like like the preparation or whatever. You know, like whenever you get the chance to represent the country, it's a different feeling. It's a different. I don't know. You you can't really explain that. There's a lot of people want to well, that wants to play for their for their country, you know, and you just you just want to, to make the most of the chance that they get. We didn't really care about like if we trained together or if we, we were prepared properly or like if if anybody saw us playing from the outside, they wouldn't even know that we didn't we didn't we didn't train together or we weren't prepared properly for it. And we didn't really care about that. Like I don't know, uh, maybe the JFF did the best they could. Um, yeah, but we didn't really. That didn't really phase us. We just wanted to to go out there and and like enjoy ourselves and and make ourselves known and and make a lot of people know that talent is in Jamaica, too, and it's not only like running or whatever they they know Jamaica for, where where else wherever you know. Um, but yeah, the, we just wanted to play. Um, and I think we, we made a great account of ourselves, you know, and uh, just only thing I can say is just congrats to everybody that was a part of that, that setup. I know you go on a lot of, um, a lot of overseas trial. Do you want to share with the viewers, um, some of the, um, the team you go and went and trial and why do you think it never worked out for you? Um, I can't remember. I know I, I can't remember all the teams that I went on trial with. I know I went one. I went on trial once with, with um, Tampa Bay Road is in the USL. I went. I went to on trial in Canada once with Toronto FC. And um, up to, t I don't really know why. I, why I didn't. Why I didn't um, sign in any of those clubs because um, when I went there, everybody liked me. They liked who I played. Um, but. I was young, you know, I didn't really understand everything. I just saw it as another chance to play football, you know. Um, yeah, I remember, the, and I remember I was in Spain once, and Sporting Braga, that's a, a top team in in Portugal, they wanted to, to work with me, but um, I wasn't, I wasn't, a pre, um, I wasn't happy with the, the, um, the contract that they wanted to give me. I knew something happened with um, Espanol, a club in Sp in Spain named Espanol. They liked me, so I don't know. At the time, I didn't really have control over the situation. Um, it wasn't me. I didn't. I didn't really understand the situation um, properly. So I, um, I was. I went to Portugal in Braga, and I was staying there, and I wasn't. I wasn't happy with anything at all. I didn't sign or anything as yet. I was supposed to sign like a couple of days after I arrived. Now I was supposed to sign the day I, the day I arrived, and then I don't know what happened. Something happened. I, as I said, I, the situation wasn't clear to me, and I went. I was staying at the at their facilities, and I just I wasn't happy with like staying there. And then when they like told me the contract that they had for me, and I, uh, I wasn't I wasn't happy with that. Um, I think I was devalue. I would devalue myself if I went into that situation. So I said that I would, um, I would go back home and like work hard again and like try to to um, create another opportunity for myself. Yeah, and then I 
after that I was I, I went back and started playing in the Premier League again. Then I went with the national team and I play I, that, yeah, that in that same um, year I think I made my debut with the national team and then after that I came here and trial and and signed. Yeah. And, Do you yeah. went to Manchester City with the Digicel to and trial? Um I went to I went to Manchester City, yes, but it wasn't like a, it was more of an experience. It was the trial, you know. Like we weren't like training with like Manchester City players. We were training with like all the guys that got selected when when the coaches from Manchester City went into the Caribbean. Yeah, it was more of an experience. We they were showing us the, they were showing us the, the stadium and like we got to meet the players, and that's the that's the first time I met Sterling. <laughs> Um, yeah, and after that, I like I kept in contact with him. Maybe not as much, but well, yeah, that's where I got to me uh, meet him. Yeah, well, it wasn't really a trial. Um, it was like an experience. You know, you never know what can happen. Everybody wants to do their um, best when they were there, like somehow to get seen or something. You know, but yeah, it was a good experience. Um, yeah, Manchester City is a is a is a, is a different story. It's next level. So, I don't know if you see this interview with your farmer, with your teammate, Ravel Morrison, farmer, yeah. Manchester United plays an excellent player. You see the comment where he said? Uh, that Ravel said. That yeah, Ravel's about you. Yeah, yeah, um, I, yeah I, saw, I saw it, like, when he did the interview, I saw it the, the day after because I was sleeping. And um, I sent him a message on WhatsApp and I told him, um, thanks for all the, the things that he said about me and he said to me um he said come on bro um, just believe in yourself you're going to go right to the top and like i really appreciated that for someone like ravel to like see that and ravel has, has basically done it all he's yeah he has, he's seen it all and he knows like when someone i think he knows when someone can like play at the level at the highest level you know and yeah i just i told him i told him thank you and yeah and then i realized it was all over the place and everybody was sending it to me they were tagging me on instagram and whatever but yeah it's a really nice feeling to have that you know um, like a person like ravel like to say that about you, you know it's, it's, a, it's a really good feeling yeah ravel is a top player a quote manchester united alex Ferguson said He's one of the best youngsters come to the academy. And at the time, you have Paul Pogba, you have Martial. I think you have um, Rashford and these players coming through the academy. And to see a player like Ravel Morris is saying that, that's a big accomplishment. So do you admire David Silva as um, a player? He yeah. used left foot. Yeah, um, of course. I think he's a really good, he's a, he's a great player. Can't say good, he's a great player. Um, of course, I would admire him. He plays the same position as me. I, I watch him a lot. Um, even before Ravel, like, said I, like, I'm like a little David Silva. Um, I watch David Silva a lot. I watch a lot of, like, players that plays at high level in my position, you know. Yeah, and I think, I think David Silva is a really good player, of course, you know. But, like, all I have to do is just, is just, just continue doing what I'm doing, man. Just continue playing, um, showing a lot of people that um, yes, I have the I have the capabilities to play at the highest level. You know, until my chance come, I just have to keep. I just have to be consistent, man. One hundred percent, man. You have a big future ahead of you, man. And every time I see Phil Ford play, I saw you play. You know, you just have to just continue work. Trust me. You and Shamal Nicholson. I tell Shamal all the time. Say Shamal. Every single time I see um, Christian Benkeke play, Roman Lukaku play, every time I see um, Basi Swahi play, you play similar football to them. You have the, um, the physics, you have everything to play like a Christian Benkeke. To me, and Christian Benkeke and all of these players come from the league, same league that Shaman Nichols in. So in future is very bright and stuff. But I want to talk to you about the national team. What are your experience with the Jamaican national team? You play, you went to the Gold Cup. It didn't feature a lot, but some of your experience here. Um, um, the um, the reggae boys so far. Um, 
yeah, you're talking about the Gold Cup. Um, just, just to be there alone, you know, um, like as a youngster, I made my debut like a, a couple, like a month before, or a couple of months before. I don't quite remember. Yeah, and then no, like a a couple, like a week before before the Gold Cup, I think I made my debut. Yeah. You remember this game? Be sorry to cut you off. You remember this game when you come on against the United States in United? Yeah, that, that was my debut for the Listen, national team. Bro, I'm telling you, the feel, the touch, every single thing. You just, or you control the ball, or you move the ball, or you was just one touch, two touch, trying to get involved in the game. That's the feeling of David Silva. That's the feelings of Phil Ford. I'm not just telling you this right now. Bro, you have a big future ahead of you. And if you continue your people comparing your um comparing you to some of these players, you just have to trust your ability. And that game against United States, just that local piece of clippings there. I say, Who is this guy? I was sitting with another um Canadian guy. I'm saying, Who is this guy? I'm saying, listen, he is one of Jamaican biggest talent for the last year in Jamaica. He has done it. He has done it in Kankakov, um, in the um, World Cup qualified youth level. He's a fantastic player. But continue what you were going to say. Um, yeah, I was saying that um, um, just to, just being at the Gold Cup, you know, it it, it's a, it was a different feeling, man. Um, it was my first time around in the national setup, national senior setup. Um, yeah. yeah, just being around the players, and you know, uh, me and and Leon, we went we went in the same time, like. Leon didn't play the game because he, he wasn't um, fully fit. He had a little like niggle. And um, yeah, but like just being there around all the guys that they grew up watching, you know, seeing playing for Jamaica, like even though I didn't play a lot, I think I played one game, a couple of minutes in one game. Like, but the experience was different, man. It was, and like you see a lot of players like that plays in the English Premier League and like you get to watch them, you get to see the level that they're at, you know. And you get to see their game like it's right in front of you, you know. So I'll just being around them, I just wanted to learn as much and grasp as much that I could have grasped from them, you know. Um, yeah, and all in all, it was a really it was like it was a great experience. Definitely, definitely. But Gold Cup coming up for the reggae boys. I know you're doing your thing in Belgium. World Cup, um, the Gold Cup coming up. What are your thoughts on the Gold Cup? You guys, I think you guys is the third best team in Kankakov behind United States and Mexico. You guys have been proving yourself in the last two Gold Cup. You guys has put in yourself in a good position for qualifying for the World Cup. But before I talk about the World Cup qualifying, I just want to stick on the Gold Cup. It's a big tournament couple months from now for the Jamaican team to prepare for the World Cup qualifying. What are you? What are your thoughts on the team? Do you guys think you can go one better than two years ago to win the Gold Cup? Um, I think I think right now the only the only like really the real, only real choice we have is is to win the Gold Cup. Like as you said before, Jamaica has been um, doing really well in the Gold Cup, and um, it's just some little things that that's like that's stopping us from winning. And I think like now. Um, the team has, has like it's it's the team is a stronger team right now from my point of view. You know, and I think like if we go if we go into the Gold Cup fully focused, um everybody locked in one hundred locked in one hundred percent. I think um I don't think anyone um should stop us, you know, um regardless everybody is saying Mexico and USA this but I think we have all the capabilities to, to beat those um these two teams. And and beat them like properly, you know, like not like a lucky winner. No, I think we we have all the qualities to beat them properly. Um, we just need to like prepare properly for the tournament, you know, and and then just let our football do the talking after that. Definitely, this is the next question. This is a big question for you. Will the reggae boys qualify for the twenty twenty two World Cup? You have a great squad. Bobby Reed, Leon Bailey, you yourself, Shaman Nichols, Junior Flemings, Alvas Powell, Taxi, 
Blake, you guys have a lot of experience at the set time. You guys has been playing a lot of tournament over the last two to three years. You guys have that experience. And with that experience mixed with some of the young players in the team, I don't see why you guys cannot make it to the World Cup, next World Cup. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think we're going to qualify for the World Cup, man. I think we're definitely going to qualify. I think everybody is like like buzzing to start um playing the World Cup qualifiers. You know, um, the team hasn't been selected as yet, but I think whoever um gets selected, um, they're ready. Um, they they will be ready, ready to to like give one hundred percent out there for Jamaica and for themselves. You know, for their families. Yeah, and as I said before, I think Jamaica is going. It, I think. 2022 is the year that Jamaica will um, see another World Cup um, for sure. Um, I don't, for some reason, I have a really, really good feeling about the World Cup qualifiers. You know? um, I don't, as I said before, I don't really see like who should stop us like from from qualifying for the World Cup, but ourselves. You know, as long as we prepare properly for it, you know, and like everything is in place before, I think we'll definitely go to the World Cup. Definitely, I totally agree with the Panama definitely rebuilding, the Costa Rica rebuilding, the Honduras rebuilding. Automatically, Jamaica have a great chance. I would say I would give Jamaica 85% chance, but I want Jamaica to improve the away from from home. In the South American, when you go get a, up against a South American team like Panama, Honduras, Mexico, USA, they always get the better of us. I don't know, for some reason, away from home over the years, not just two, three years, four years ago. I'm talking about from the last 20 years. We have been very, very poor away from home. But I know Jamaica will definitely comfortable playing at the office in Kingston. I know it's going to ramp up. And I know you guys, a lot of young guys, Leon Bailey, Bobby Reed, all of you fans will definitely come out and support. Like, like the last goal cup of play, one or two game play in Kingston, that was a very good support by the Jamaican people. And Jamaican people, you guys need to come out and support the reggae boys. It's very important. Home advantage in World Cup qualify is very important. Look at the United States. Look at Mexico. The stadium is full. The fans have a big part to play and the player them, definitely. But I really I believe you guys have a great chance. But my next question to you, um, what do you think on the JFF? Do you guys back the JFF to um, make sure that you guys, everything will be okay, comfortable? I want corporate Jamaica need to come on board. The team do have a main sponsor. I know you are a player and you don't want to touch on that little bit. I will be the spokesman. You don't have to talk about that. So I don't want to put you on the spot. As what I said, I want Carpet Jamaica to come on board and support this reggae boys team. I see you guys as a unit together with the league thing with Low, and it was a good backing from the player to back the team. At least we see every single one of you guys want to represent for the reggae boys, but they have to just do it the right way and just respect. Without the player of that confidence, without the player feel a big part of the thing and not others you guys is the first priority and this is what i want to say to the jff but the player them sat out their contract when they were supposed to need to start out before they come to camp it's important this is 2021 we cannot have the same mistake over the years continue failing the jamaican national team not to qualify for the world cup this is a big opportunity for us with Panama, Costa Rica, and the US rebuilding. We need to fix ourselves very quick enough. And I don't want you to answer that question. I don't want to put you on the bus. But I want to more talk about your career now in Belgium. You are playing for the under 23 team for, um, for your club. Yeah. What are your thoughts on your season so far? And how difficult it is for you to bed in? You know, most Jamaican used to the the warmness, you in a country that cold, very cold in Belgium. What are your thoughts on your club? Um, first of all, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here. You know, yeah, I've, I've been playing. Um, I've been playing the second team. Um, this season, the season is now cancelled because of the whole um pandemic and thing. 
Um, but like last year when the season was playing, I didn't play the first game. But after the first game, I scored in every game, every other game, um, yeah, from September until until December. Um, yeah, so the uh, only thing I can say it's been really good for me because um, I'm scoring and playing properly. Um, yeah, and then I, I got my chance with the, with the national team in, in Saudi Arabia. I think I, I made a um, good account of myself there also. And I, that's that's where I met like um, Ravel and all the, the no the and Bobby and all the, the other two England guys that came in. Yeah, but I think like for my team I've been doing really well. Um, for some reason I'm not in the first team. That's out of my control. You know, all I can do is just try and um like to improve every day. Like um like look, I'm playing in my second team and I, I went to Saudi Arabia with the national team and. Somebody that that um, that played at the, that played at the highest level um, recognizes that um, I have something I can play at the highest level. So obviously I'm doing something right. Um, all I need to do is just just continue doing that. Um, like but my club here, playing in the first team is not it's out of my country. The coach says I'm not going to play, and I can do nothing about that. He has his his philosophy. Is is like maybe believes in another player more than me. So all I have to do is just like. Just work hard, um, try to improve every single day on my game and just leave everything else in, in God's hands. Definitely. I know you get a lot of love from your club. When I was doing the research, I see um, a lot of, you get a lot of tension from spectators, the cleaner, the newspaper in Belgium. They're always writing about you and stuff. What do you feel about that? And you're not in the first team yet to get so much glory. And you're not in the first. It, it's kind of strange to see you get a lot of media comment, um, your appearance in the newspaper a lot. Yeah, and you're not yeah. in the first team. So that simply means you're doing a good job. Yeah, I mean, it's but it's always nice to get recognition, you know. Um, but it's not like you're there. I'm I'm here searching for recognition, you know. Um, I'm just doing my job, doing what I was brought here to do, you know, regardless of what um level I'm doing it at. Um, but yeah, it's 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 really it's a really nice feeling, um, and and that also puts like pressure on the coach in the in the first team. You know, but for some reason, I'm I'm not playing as I said before, but that's that's out of my control. Um, and I still uh, like not because I'm not playing. I want my team to to do well, to win like every game. You know, but like yeah, as I said before, I just got I just have to to keep doing what I'm doing and just keep improving every day. You know. And I think everything else will fall in place. Definitely. My next question to you is the local Premier League is not start. How do you think that will affect the national team? Because normally you have a 23 man squad in the local Premier League training at the JFF, but you guys, that's not the case. Do you think the, um, the, the overseas player mixed with the local player, do you guys think you guys get enough time to bed in? And to come together more. Um, um. Now, to be honest, um, it's it's going to be really difficult because obviously there is there is nothing going on in in like in the country where football is concerned. There's no football playing. So most of the players, I'm sure, they're not happy. They want the league to like resume. You know, I don't know for I don't know the reason or whatever the league is not playing. Um, but I would I would definitely love to like see the league like start as as quickly as possible. Like. And like you know, it's football. In, like you have some players in Jamaica playing football, and that's their like that's what they used to feed their family. You know, regardless if it's not a lot, but you know they need to like to be playing to be getting their salaries. You know, football is not all about money. Everybody love um, everybody that's playing. I think love the game, but your salary, your your money is also important. You know. You have to you have a family to feed, especially if you're playing in Jamaica and you have a, have a child, you know. It's even more difficult. So I think like I, I I personally want the league to like resume if it could resume today. I would like that or tomorrow, whenever. You know, but I think it's really difficult for the players that's not playing now in Jamaica. Um, and obviously if you're not playing, you're not going to get um paid. So I don't know and if you don't have a job, then you know it's that's a whole different story. So I think that the league needs to like resume as quickly as possible. Definitely. So what would you say your biggest achievement in football? I know you win a lot of 
so far you win a lot of individual award what would you say your biggest success so far in um, your career <laughs> Um, I would say my, my biggest success thus far in my career is definitely um, like just getting myself a contract in Europe, you know, that's, all, that's where I've always wanted to play. Um, I, have, I have a lot more to do, but like just like I'm, 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 I'm on my way there, you know, so um, that's something I have to be really grateful for. And there's a lot of things like playing for the national team that's also something like that's another another um, level also you know so yeah I'm, I'm really grateful for those those two so like i'm involved in the national team you know um so and i have a, I have a professional contract where i can um get seen by people um i can i can help my family even if it's not like the, the biggest i can help my family um and i think i still have a lot more to do but those are two things that I'm I'm really I'm really really I'm grateful for. What would you say in the national team? Who is the closest friend where you're going through a rough time, a difficult time? Who do you say would help you? Who would say that player you go to and say, Oh, this work, what you think I'm doing and stuff for help you out, bring you through the hard time? Um you know, um to be honest, like I think it's really like I'm not saying it, it, it's impossible, but like whenever you're with the national team, I think it's really difficult to have a, a hard time. You know, like when you're with the national team, you forget about every single thing. You know, it's just like right here in the camp. Like it's the vibe is is different. You know, it's it's a different vibe. Everything is always always good, no problems, nothing. You forget about. I think if you have problems before you go there, you forget about everything. But um. My be- I think I can. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who to single out because I've never been in that that situation or that position before. But um, um when we... I, when I, the first time I played, like I didn't even um say anything to anybody. But um, at the time, Sean Francis was in the squad, and he was the one that he said to me. Um, that was that was when I. That was in the when I went to the Gold Cup here. Yeah. Um, he said to me, um, just, just like, I don't know what happened with training and like somebody else was speaking, you know, and I'm not saying anything. And like, he, he, he called me one side and he said to me, like, just continue doing what you're doing. Um, uh, because it's a long time. He, 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 um, he didn't see a talent like me, you know, um, he was saying that I was really good with the ball. I was comfortable and like, it's my first time here and I was playing as if I was here a long time. And like yeah, it, it was just it was just uh, um motivating me and like telling me to keep doing what I was doing. So I, <laughs> I would say that's the only time I've been in a situation like that where like someone was uh, speaking to me about like football. And... But I think there's a lot of players there that I can like. I think I can speak to anyone there um, about like if I'm having a, like if I'm not playing well and like what I need to do. I can speak to the coach, any of the players. I think they would gladly like explain to me or share their point of view with me. What do you guys about doing, Mela? Oh, um, yeah, shoot. <laughs> oh, did I forget? To, um, yeah, I think no. Um, now that I'm looking back at it, I think Mela would be the person that I would go to. Like, he's one of the like when I when I when I first in the national team, Mela is my general general. Like, respect Mela one and yeah, I respect everybody, but. I think I'm at, like, Mila is, <laughs> no, Mila is, Mila is my general in the national team. Okay, so what it feel like to share the same Jesse Newman with Bobby Reed, Leon Bailey, Shaman Nicholson? Um, it's like, I think it's, you know, it's like, it's like you're, like, you're, you're, you're playing at the highest level, but you're not really there as yet, you know, but like, as I said, like, just like, it just just, just, drives, it. just being around them, it just drives you to like, you just automatically want to become a better player. You want to learn a lot from them, you know. So like, whenever you touch the pitch, or like you're always trying to like see, like, what they do, and like what you need to to like like you compare yourself with them, like what 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 little like aspects of their game you can add to your game to improve, you know. Because obviously they're playing at the highest level, um, yeah. And, 
I spoke I spoke with Leon also one time. Leon was showing me like some clippings of myself. He was saying that he, he sometimes he watch he, he was he was watching me and like he was explaining to me um like what I like he was saying showing me some things that I did good but like he was showing me another way I could do it like quicker because that's always it that's it just that's just the difference with with um the next level of football you know everything is everything happens quickly so he said yeah you do that but it's good it's good um that, that but look if you release the ball like quicker right there then you would have ended up like in the opponent's box or something you know but just being around all those guys is just you just want to learn you just want to improve what would you say um i forgot my question that was coming from my head but i forgot my question but yeah I think you you guys have a great chance, man, to make it to the World Cup. So I hope you guys coming out and and do well. But I just want to tell you, thank you very much for coming out to share your story. I hope you can get some more reggae boys player. Get Nicholson on the channel. Tell Nicholson I want to share his story. I have him already on my channel now. It's like one year ago. So I need him back. And... I need to get some more reggae boys play, but they're not answering to them DM on Instagram. I know a lot of people um, answer to them. You know, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm young, you know, but most of the guys up there, like, you know, family, like, they're, yeah. I'm, I'm living in Europe by myself, but like, yeah. they have their family, they have sons, um, they have their yeah. family. So sometimes I think it's because they're busy, it's not because they don't want to answer them. I can definitely ask them, you know, I can ask them, yeah. like, if it's possible for them to, like, come on the show and then I can hear what they say and then tell you what. Yeah, I definitely have Marlon King. You know Marlon King, right? Marlon King. Yeah, I heard I about him. I already like, know him personally. Yeah. yeah, I supposed to have Marlon King sometime next week. I, last week I interviewed Simon Preston so yeah. to share him journey. This is what I want to do. Many people do interview. I just want to do it different, you know, like your... your, 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 your um, your early life and these stuff. It's important for your fans to know all these stuff. You know, yeah. where you're coming from. Because many times people don't know where Ali and Bill are coming from because they just see the glory and they see the yeah. glory of everything on Shaman Nichols. But they don't know how oh, it's very hard to get here. It takes a lot of work. It take, yeah. It's just like a normal 95 or much more harder to get up every morning and change twice a day, sometimes three times. It's not easy physically, mentally, it it, it and your body. Yeah, it's it's no, nah, I wouldn't tell anybody that it's easy at all. Anybody aspiring to be a professional footballer, nothing about it is easy, you know. But the only thing I would say, the, the greatest thing about it, you get to enjoy what you love, you know, regardless. So sometimes like you're not even focusing on the work, you just want to enjoy yourself and and you know that like after like if you do everything in in your anything everything possible like you know you're you're going to get to live a proper life after after your career you know with your family you just get to chill so why not why not just just like work as hard as you can make all the sacrifices you know and then yeah just enjoy your career and after your career also yeah, this is a question i always want to ask you what is your biggest strength and what is your biggest weakness you think you should need to work on? Your weakness and your strength. Because many people think she is strong at that they don't need to work on that. So um, tell me both sir. I would say my, my weakness is my weakness. Um well, yeah, my weakness now, but I've been working on it a lot. But I think my weakness, my the weak, the weakest part of my game is like. I was when I when I first came into Europe, I was tactically I wasn't tactically aware. I was tactically poor, and like when I didn't have the ball, my work rate was it wasn't up to standard like like they wanted it to be here. So um, I worked a lot on that. I'm sure it, like if anybody watched the games I played with the, with against Saudi Arabia, you can see that. Um, yeah, but that 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 was the, that was the weakest part of my game, and I'm still working on it. Um, and my strength. I would have a lot of strengths. Um, from my perspective, I can I dribble properly. I can pass the ball properly. I can I can shoot. I can like any any. I think everything where the with the ball is concerned, uh, is my is a strength for me, and I'm I'm working in I'm I'm always working on on my strengths. You know, I think I work I work even harder on my strengths than my weakness. You know, because 
I think my, my strength is what like took me here. Um, so I'm always working on like dribbling with the ball, dribbling quickly with the ball. Um, I do a lot of passing drills, shooting drills, like play a lot of one twos, every every everything. Um, I'm always working on those stuff, you know. Like obviously, as I said before, I want I want to improve every single day. And I think a lot of people, as you said, as as you said um, earlier, a lot of people forget to work on their strengths, you know, and sometimes that that like helps to drop the the game drops, you know, because they they are focused on one thing, like this is my problem, you know, and I need to work on it. And uh, no, but you also have to work on your, on your strengths. It's really important because that's what um, get, um, that's what allowed everybody to see that you have talent, you know, or see, they saw something, you know, so you have to continue working on that. Definitely. What kind of advice would you give um, a lot of young players come, in, come up in Jamaica right now, if they want, they want to get in Europe, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, you know, as, um, I'm, I'm, I was born and raised in Jamaica, you know, so I know, I know like the life and, and most of Jamaican footballers are, are from the ghetto. So I understand all the difficulties and everything, but I think, um, you just have to be, just have to be dedicated, you know, and you'll have to make a lot of sacrifices. You'll have to like, it's, it's sad, but yeah, you'll have to like stop speaking with a lot of friends, a lot of people around you that's giving you the wrong advices. You know, and like whenever you get where you want it to be, then you realize why you did it, you know. And yeah, just like every day you get the chance to, to go out on the pitch, just give one hundred percent, you know, regardless of, of what anybody anybody wants to say. You'll be sometimes you'll be training, you'll be struggling and you'll have a lot of people laughing. It's no problem, you know. Just just know what you want and, and, and always remember why you're doing it, you know. And I think like if you do that and you're one hundred percent committed, everything will, will fall in place, you know. Definitely. And I, I was talking what was your weakness. I'm going to touch a little bit on that. I'm going to give you my perspective on you. I think you is more a luxury player. Um like Mezil Ozil, you don't do a much work. And this is where the game is going forward now. Yeah. Type of player like you. You have to learn how to adjust because 10, 15 years ago, Jack Will Jack Jack Wilshire and these players, similar type of player of you, and they find it really difficult in 2021 to adjust their game because they do not work very half, very um work a lot half the ball. And to be a balanced midfielder now in this generation is not as a midfielder, as a creative midfielder. If you see David Silva in him last two to three years. He do a lot of work after the ball. Although he is the maestro, but in this modern time in Europe, he has to do a lot of work after the ball. And it's not only about create, because if it's all about create, Mezil Ozil is playing the Arsenal team. If Rodriguez was playing, Ames playing for Everton, he has to start work after the ball. Although he's a luxury player, and that's where the football go. Will I think player like you going to benefit? Come football change every single 10, 15 years. So probably player like Mezil Ozil will need back like 10, 15 years ago, it will come back in the game. But at this moment, as a creative midfielder, he has to work off off the ball. Like Bruno Fernandez. We call him Bruno Fernandez. He can score a lot of penalty, but we give him a lot of respect. I am a Liverpool fan, so that is why I give him that nickname, Bruno Fernandez. But it's a pleasure to have you, bro, and I really, really appreciate it to take your, take your time. You could have doing something right now. You could have worked on a weakness or something doing training. And I see you post a lot of video on Instagram when you're training yeah. and stuff. I've been watching it. I've been watching you and Shaman Nicholson. I see you guys have a very close relationship. You guys live close together? Um, or you guys live no, together? No, no. I, um, you live like like an hour and like one hour and fifteen or twenty minutes away from me. But like when the when the when the pandemic like when it just when Corona thing just like um sp- started spreading, I went over his house and I was staying there for a while. So that's when we that's when we got um a bit closer. Like when I was in Jamaica, I didn't I know him, I knew him, but I didn't like I didn't we didn't really speak a lot because obviously we're 
kind of last him. He didn't have any theory. Yeah. But when I, when, I, when I came to Belgium, um, I got I got a lot closer to him who started speaking on a daily basis and things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's fair enough. Fair enough. But um, as I said, my brother, you have a big future ahead of you. Big year coming up for Jamaica. I hope you're in the roster. I would definitely, definitely look at the roster and always keep up to speed and I will definitely keep the link. And one more question. You alone live in Belgium. How it feel to separate from your family? It's um, get the better of you? Um feel lonely. Yeah, um, I think I think anybody at all like um leave like if you leave Jamaica, you know in Jamaica the vibe and everything is different, but when you leave and you come live by yourself, of course you're going to feel lonely sometimes. Most of the time, you're going to feel lonely, especially the first time, like when you just come, um, and you realize that you're you're on your on your own. You know the time difference and everything. Sometimes, it, like when I just arrived, that I, I didn't know how to speak with my family properly. You know, like whenever they want to speak with me, I, I'd have to be going to my bed because now it's 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 seven fourteen in the night, so like. Whenever, like, you know, like in the evening when my family want to speak with me, I'm getting ready um, to go to sleep because I have training in the morning. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's like when I just, when I just, just came here, it was really, really difficult. I won't lie about that, but like after, as like I said, it all comes, comes down to sacrifices. You know, I mean, you have to sacrifice a lot of things, you know, and a lot of people like have to understand this, you know, and if they cannot understand whether it's a girlfriend or whatever, then they don't mean any good, you know. Yeah. You have to just just make a sacrifices, man, and just and just do what you have to do. Like maybe the conversations with who you want to speak with are a bit shorter, but at least you still get to, to speak with them. Yeah, you just have to make a sacrifices and and like just remain focused and work hard, and you'll be good, man. It's a pleasure talking to you, my brother. I'm going to share something with you where I see Robin Van Persie share on Instagram. I will find the video and get it to you it's very info um very good to share this type of information with you robin verse run Ver robin verse he grew up with two you see that yeah i think i said i think i seen the video before yeah robin von person same group with two two of him best friend them they were at the said age them time them just playing for arsenal and stuff and he just said they just go in a different direction and he was going a different direction and he just could have this friend anymore. It's not a bad thing to do, but sometimes you want to be successful. You know, a lot of Jamaican people don't understand. They feel when they're overseas, you feel like you have money, but they don't understand how hard they have to work for it and stuff. So I'm glad you see that, that video, but keep it eye, my brother. Trust me, I'm looking forward to seeing the Gold Cup and I'm looking forward to see in the um World Cup qualified team come September and I want you to do well. All the best to you. And you have anything to say to the fans before you leave? Um <laughs> yeah um, to the fans everybody that um supports me and, and like me um are uh, forever for for everyone that doesn't like like support my playing style or I don't know just you know you have fans that like you and don't like you but I just want to say everybody like I really appreciate the support appreciate everything that the fans have done for me. I really appreciate you guys. Um, you guys have been a, a big, um, you have been very important during my success is concerned. I just want to say, um, yeah, just thank you very much for everything that, that you have um, um, done for me and just like stay, stay safe um, and just remain positive in, in everything that you do. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like the video, share the message. Ryan LFC with Tariq, I would like to say peace out. Until next time, from your boy Ryan LFC. Thank you. Thank you very much.